Hi, welcome everyone to the sixth episode of the Fantastic Talks. It's great to have um, you all with me on in this very tough time. You know, I'm and uh, my heart goes out to all of us, all of us Indians, and especially the people who had been in Maharashtra, Mumbai, and now people who are in Delhi, NCR, and then this is going across. So it is a very, very tough time, and my, you know, my mm -hmm. strength. And blessings to each and every one of you. The let's together work together, and we we will and we can and we will come out of this pandemic. It is so amazing to see the way people have uh, come up and the way people have supported each other. I think the communities have never been stronger. Like I have lived in a community where I didn't know even a single neighbor, and over this last one month, there has been so much support. You know, a community group has been created. People are helping each other. People are staying awake at night, trying to find hospital beds, oxygen, other stuff for their neighbors. So I think as a community, this has brought us together. There are a lot of people who have had losses. All of us have understood the importance of insurance. You know, people have understood that I can't be caught without an insurance because it can financially ruin me. We used to watch people, movies where we used to see that whenever there was a financial ruin there was always a health emergency so i think everybody has understood the need of health insurance everybody has understood mm -hmm. the need of having a good life insurance that why do you need to have a life insurance and it needs to be adequate today when people are demanding running after life insurance which used to be a push product nobody is there offering life insurance because the reinsurers have suffered so many losses and the insurance companies have also got so many proposals that they are not able to process them. So we have seen a drastic, you know, change in that. But uh, but again, as a community, as a country, we have come together. Yes, there have been lapses, but we are there in it. We are stronger together, and we have huddled together. And I wish as the as quickly as this wave has come, it should go away quickly because whatever goes up quickly, also comes down quickly. And we are seeing that in Mumbai. And that is very, very positive news. And we have seen it some of, in some of the other cities in the US also. So let's hope that this passes away quickly. And uh, this is our sixth episode of uh, the Fantastic Talks. You know, the basic purpose of this talk was to help you engage with some of the brightest brains in this industry, learn from their journeys, mm -hmm. learn from their management styles, learn from their challenges. Because at the, as they say, making a mistake is the best thing you can do, but, but do, repeating the mistake is the worst thing that you can do. So point is that why, and, and also don't make a mistake that somebody else has made. So learning from other people's mistake is also a big, big thing. So, you know, so it is always good to understand people's journey and uh, Tata AIA is one of my favorite companies and Naveen especially, you know, I credit him by me uh, as one of the key people who made insurance industry great in India, that he came in from McKinsey, he came in with a fresh thought, he brought in some amazing, highly customer centric products. So these high return guaranteed return plans that are there today, which are actually offering a higher IRR you know, the, the, then even a bank FD and they are 100% tax free, plus you get 10 to 15 times life cover. And plus you are assured of a return over 15, 20, 10, 30 years. I think these are fantastic products and they are highly customer centric. I know there are some financial planners mm -hmm. who still go by the old books that insurance is not good or the products are not good and it's better to debundle. But it's always the products. Yes, at that time when they did their mm -hmm. CFPs and their financial planning, maybe these products were not good. But today we definitely have some amazing products. And there are two people who had played a huge role in this. And Naveen is, is one of them. 
and i am very proud and to be uh, calling him and sharing with him also and you know second part is that as i said so whether you if you it's a great time for you to also enhance your knowledge so whether if you want to be a financial professional then please do see your cfp international college of financial planning is an amazing platform do your cfp become a great financial planner and that's a great business to be in a great place to uh, you know build your career all you need is x number of clients and if you are honest and true to them then you are set for life but and but if you want to be a great investor then again don't blindly depend on people we launched a fantastic program which is a very nominal cost because we want people to be committed three week programs with one year of hand holding where faculty teaches you the basics so that you can work with your wealth manager or whoever you choose or even if you want to go directly to learn about wealth create wealth we offer a 100% money back guarantee if you are not satisfied the net promoter score how many people will recommend is 84% which is very very high that means out of 10 people who join the program almost 8.5 or 8 or 9 people will actually recommend this programs to their friends and family that this is a fantastic program so do use that but without further taking away time i am i am very pleased to invite one of the brightest brains of indian insurance industry and one of the most amazing persons navin navin thank you for taking out time and uh, making yourself available for this talk you know here uh, today you know i i won't start like a normal talk you know where we talk of straight away get into business this thing we want to understand the person called navin so navin tell us about your childhood you know we would like to understand about your childhood about your parents and what was it like sure sure firstly sanjeev thank you very much uh, you know as you said it is a very somber time very difficult time and uh, may i just take this opportunity to remind all your viewers all your followers that uh, the first priority we have is to stay safe ourselves and the second priority we have is to help others uh, you know who are in the need of help and as you said it is it is an amazing time the way the community has come together uh, it is very very inspiring to see and uh, we are all doing what we can uh, It's good to share the stage with you, virtual stage, of course. Uh, you know, we are very safely distanced from each other. I am in Mumbai, you are in Delhi. Uh, regarding uh, your question now, in terms of my childhood, uh, you know, my my dad was in the private sector. Uh, he worked for a company called Crompton Greaves, and as a result, uh, you know, we would move around quite a bit. So I was born in Delhi, but then we lived in. Ahmedabad, Pune, came back to Delhi, and then I did my schooling in Delhi, Lucknow, and Chennai. Uh, so it was uh, absolutely fantastic for me to see how you know different this one country called India is, uh, and even between Delhi and Lucknow, which is you know hardly a few hundred kilometers apart, uh, it's a seven-eight hour train journey, or used to be at that time. Uh, it's probably faster now. Uh, you know the culture is so different the way people approach life is so different uh, and i'm not saying one is good or one is bad absolutely that's not the intention but life is very different culture is very different people are very different uh, and then when we moved to chennai this is i'm talking of 1987 oh my god it was like a completely different world uh, you know completely different culture completely different language i made some amazing friends over there with whom i'm in touch even till date uh, but i think you know just growing up all over the country uh, with great friends in all of these places uh, every one of these places i made uh, terrific friends uh, it just kind of gave me a sense of the diversity of the country and i think it made me a little bit more open to you know considering possibilities beyond what i would have done if i had kind of grown up in one place and then i went to engineering school in uh, chennai itself but then my uh, business school was in uh, ahmedabad which was in the western side of the country again uh, very different culture very different milieu and by the time i was studying in business school my parents had moved to kolkata so when i would go home for uh, vacation uh, i would go to kolkata which is obviously again uh, a land in itself a magical land in itself in many ways 
so it was great fun it was great fun uh, great friends uh, you know very normal i would say middle class kind of uh, uh, household i have a brother who is now in the us he works with uh, google uh, been married for more than 20 years now uh, my wa- wife is a working professional uh, she works with the harvard business school in india they have an india research center uh, so she leads the research team over there and yeah i have two boys uh, who are my uh, ceos um, you know i think they tell me what to do when to do it how to do it and obviously you know they don't brook any misbehavior or uh, disobedience yeah so you know very privileged and very blessed in many ways but yeah that's the short story yeah navin and it's uh, you know you said it very well so you know my also i have this saying which used to be like uh, my father used to tell me that children are the fathers of men because whenever i was trying to explain to him something or telling him no this is the right and now i see my own children doing it to me that you know the dad you have to do this this is going to be your schedule this is and, and you know at the end of the day you can argue with everybody but at the end of the day your children are your ceos they are your bosses and, and you you do get feedback from them that uh, that uh, you need to be doing this you need not to be doing this and this is and they are there they are sitting and observing especially when we are working from home i think uh, you know this is like a unique uh, silver lining in a dark cloud that i don't i could have never imagined having uh, you know so much time to spend with my children or my children having so much time i know everybody is sitting in a different room uh, you know we are lucky enough to have that and uh, they are sitting on their computers and doing stuff but still we are getting so much time together so i think this has brought families so much closer so has that been your experience also with the pandemic where you are connecting more with you or your direct and extended family and how what do you feel about that and you know even the team communications like earlier we would talk to our teams once in a while today you know in pandemic we are doing zoom calls and we you know people who would have not even met us maybe once a year are seeing us every you know maybe every week so what, what do you feel about do you feel this pandemic has brought the world uh, you know closer i think so i think so on uh, the two parts you mentioned first on the family i th- i think definitely because you know i'm traveling less uh you know you kind of going back home every day or working from home as you said uh, kids are also at sc- home uh, school is online uh, so it kind of gives you more time with the family and you get to if nothing else at least have dinner together every day on a working day which is a privilege uh, you know i i can't remember when i last had uh, and then over the weekends whatever time you have is you know you kind of at home or in your apartment complex so i think definitely yes it's kind of brought the family much closer together than ever before and as you said you know we are, we are amongst the fortunate that we can hunker down in the lockdown and ride it out uh, as you said right at the beginning i think our heart goes out to the people uh, you know who unfortunately need to kind of you know go work every day and and the lockdown or the containment actually affects their livelihood so i think uh, while it is absolutely true that for the middle class and upwards the families have come closer together i think we should always always share a thought for uh, and do what we can for those uh, who are less privileged on the teams uh, yes again i agree with you that look this kind of interaction is easy Uh, you know we you are really i am in mumbai we are talking to people all over uh, india or maybe even beyond the shores of india um yesterday we addressed our top 1000 advisors teams and you know in the traditional world we would have kind of called them over booked the hotel room uh, kind of done something you know very fancy i know there is no substitute in some ways for face to face right so you miss being face to face with people having a meal where you don't talk about work you talk about you know other stuff uh you miss the small chat in the corridor before and after meetings uh but i think from a communication efficiency perspective right the game has already changed 
uh, the game has already changed. Zoom, Teams, call it what you will, uh, allows you to share videos, allows you to share your messages, many to many, one to one, one to many, and uh, allows you to exchange documents, make presentations remotely. I mean, this was not something we were doing 14, 15 months ago, right? We were absolutely not doing this. So I think, yes, it has become easier. It's become more efficient. But personally, if you ask me, I miss a little bit of the physical touch and feel and being able to, you know, shake hands with people and talk about something else other than work. I also feel that this, you know, in, in this uh, world of Zoom and Teams, we lurch from meetings to meetings, right? So we need to take some time out and create some mechanisms where we are connecting with people as individuals or human beings rather than saying, okay, What's the topic? What do we need to discuss? All right, done. And we move on to the next meeting. Uh, many very well said. You know, the building that personal connect on these electronic forums is itself an art. And, you know, we had, because typically we were so used to having very cut and dry meetings, uh, you know, on the electronic mode. So, you know, converting those cut and dry meetings, like just to have a catch up with someone, how you're doing, like when a person used to walk into your office, and typically, you know, having that coffee together and people are missing that. And, you know, that I think that connect uh, is missing. So, uh, you know, as uh, one part I missed on your introduction was your introduction of the 99 year term plan, where you were amongst the one of the first few companies along with PNB Midlife who brought in that product. We have a gentleman called Mr. Sajan who is asking this question that we should take up later that he's a 62 plus. And uh, he wants to buy this uh, 99 year term plan. And because he wants to create a lifetime legacy for his family. And uh, that's, uh, that's a Naveen, uh, because that you are one of the innovators of this product. So we have to answer this question and the team, please do remind us mm -hmm. that we have to take up this question. So, uh, but uh, going on to my next area is that uh, uh, Naveen, you were with McKinsey and especially with the B-School graduates. And, uh, you know, it's like virtually the dream job and one of the most rigorous companies to work for. So just tell us about your experience, that when did you join them? And, uh, you know, how did it feel? What was your experience? What did you learn from there? What it teaches you? What it doesn't teach you? Yeah. So uh, you're right. McKinsey was uh, the, the dream job from campus, from business school. Uh, I joined them straight from campus. I had no work experience before that. Uh, so I went to engineering school, business school, McKinsey, and you know, there's a lot of, in 97, we were probably not as well informed as students are nowadays. And there was no internship at McKinsey. So you kind of straight walked into the consulting firm. And there was a lot of folklore that McKinsey is very cutthroat. There was this famous phrase called up or out. So every two years, you will either get promoted or you will find yourself, you know, looking for a job. And uh, that didn't prevent any of us from joining, though. All of us were very happy to join. And it was at that time. And I think it still is the number one job at campus. But, you know, the reality couldn't be more different. Uh, I think if you ask me, this fear at the time of entry was kind of self-created fear out of lack of knowledge by us students of the business school. I think I, I ended up staying at McKinsey for 18 years, uh, right? I worked across many different countries, across Southeast Asia, some parts of Europe. Uh, I served clients in Germany, in the UK, in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, India, of course. But the one reason I kind of stayed there was the people. And, and when I say the people is, you know, really the culture in McKinsey is of making everyone succeed. I mean, they have this belief, which is fantastic, that you are only limited by your own growth. There is no fixed number of seats at the table for a partnership or senior partnership. Uh, so I was a senior partner when I left in 2014. Uh, there is no fixed seats. You're not competing with others. I think you can kind of create your own opportunities and go as long, as high as you want. And the system is working to support you, not to evaluate you, not to bring you down. And 
I think therefore one of the beauty of the system was the mentorship system. My one of my first mentors was a gentleman called Pramod Sinha. Uh, you may know him. He is he's he is a big philanthropist today. He is one of the early founders of the Ashoka University. I mean, amazing human being, outstanding individual, and uh, you know, kind of a big motivation for me to be in McKinsey uh, in my early years. Two other individuals who helped me a lot, uh, you know, through my career. made me successful and you know they literally took me under their wings to make me successful uh both both very senior people in the financial services world leo puri joydeep singh gupta uh leo went on to become the ceo of uti and then uh, today he is the chairman of uh, jp morgan in south asia and southeast asia i think he is in singapore right now as we speak and joydeep today is one of the senior most uh, leaders of mckinsey globally So I think mentorship is absolutely outstanding at McKinsey. People work to make you successful, and I think I would like to believe I did my own part in the 18 years that I was there to help make a few people successful. Right? That's the culture. You receive mentorship and you give mentorship to others. Right? So you are successful because of others, and that kind of creates responsibility on you to make others successful. so that's the first thing i think the second thing which is really really unique about mckinsey is the drive for excellence so after the first four years this is focus on you got to know something about something uh, i think uh, you know while you can be a generalist consultant there was always this focus on saying consulting is a knowledge based profession and therefore early on in your career as a consultant you need to start distinguishing yourself for something now again you can choose what you want but you have to go deep and you have to become an expert in that and by the way the way this is different from some other places is that the knowledge is not theoretical or academic right it has to have application in the real world in problems that your clients are facing right so you got got to be able to go to clients which are companies large companies uh-huh. and say okay this is what i know and therefore this is how i can help you solve your problem so i think that's the second uh, thing and the third and maybe the last thing i would say is uh, you know there is this immense focus on playing to your strengths so mckinsey has this leadership model every every firm every company has a leadership model and mckinsey said you have to either be a problem solving guru or you have to have knowledge leadership or you have to be an entrepreneur or you have to be excellent at client relationships and or you have to be excellent at mentoring people right so it was called the five part leadership model so you had to be a kind of standard uh, i would say a bare minimum standard on all these five aspects but always the encouragement was what is your spike right what is it that you are truly truly uh, you know distinctive at and whatever be your spike just work through your career to actually hone that and take that to the next level and to the next level uh and that's uh, you know that's what i learned at mckinsey uh what doesn't what mckinsey doesn't teach you um maybe i'll answer it differently uh, if you if you allow which is why did i leave mckinsey I, i was having great fun it was my first and only job for 18 years uh but i left mckinsey in the year i turned 40 and and, and this is my personal view that this is not a comment in general mm-hmm. right so please uh, just my very personal view is having become a senior partner in mckinsey it was clear if i use cricketing or football analogy that you know you are a decent coach you are advising companies right you are working hand in glove with companies so you are advising companies you are a good coach and i think it is easy when you kind of coach a batsman to say when a bowler bowls a ball at you at 100 miles per hour and it's a bouncer don't take a eye of the ball and you know duck out of the way of the delivery right swing out of the way or duck downwards or whatever else it might be but i think the question i was asking myself at uh, 40 was can i play the advice i am giving can i kind of go out and you know see in the real world in a in a line role for myself that whatever it is that i have learned at mckinsey over the last 18 years when i apply it in the real world what kind of success or what kind of challenges come my way 
right? And it was that hunger for the next level of growth, which by definition you can't get in McKinsey because it's a consulting firm and it's, I am a biased guy, but it's the world's greatest consulting firm, I would like to believe. And uh, you just can't get it in that place. So I think that's the one thing it by design cannot teach you. And that's why I stepped out. And I must say, you know, it's been a great journey of learning and fun uh, and professional growth and building something interesting ever since I stepped out of McKinsey about, you know, six and a half, seven years ago now. Very well said, uh, Naveen. It's, I think uh, your points are fantastic. And, uh, you know, giving to take, to um, you know, you have to give to take is a very well said uh, thing you said. You have to mentor to get mentored. And, you know, when you mentor someone, then, then you're creating that good karma. And that does come back to you. And for the mentor, mm -hmm. you're giving him something which is much more beyond money. You're giving him the capability. You're giving him the ability to fish. You know, I have a similar story from my own childhood. I used to, my teacher used to think that I'm a brilliant student or a brilliant mind, but I never used to get the marks. And wo apne jase, so, na, na, the theory of expectation, I wrote an article. So which was about that, how they did an experiment where the children who had got 60%, they told them that you have got 90%. And the teacher tells them, okay, look, next exam, you must get 80%. And they mark them normally. And most of them actually got more than 80% because they believed they could do it. And, uh, you know, and there was an expectation that you wanted to do it. So something similar had happened to me that uh, one of my teachers understood, okay, look, he, this guy doesn't apply. He's got the brains. So he told, he told me, okay, look, I want, you are going to be, we have this thing called, uh, where we used to have student mentors or student teachers who used to help other students. So he said, you are going to be a student teacher. I said, okay, you know, I wasn't keen, but he said, you have to do it. And I got forced into doing, doing it. And he put five of the brightest students under me. So, you know, so I went and I said, sir, are you joking? I get X percentage. They get 50% higher marks than me. And you want me to coach them? Mm -hmm. You want me to give them tuitions? He says, yes, you have to do it. And, and you know, and, uh, you know, whether I was a bad tutor or, I, the, you know, the, that teaching is the best way of learning. You know, after a year, I was getting higher marks than those guys. And let me say their marks didn't come down. <laughs> so I don't, so I think it is the uh, best way to uh, learn is to teach and what you said is an amazing and as an organization also i like to tell everyone that people think yeah we can grow in an organization by pulling others down that's not true you grow by in an organization by pushing people up any good leader any good ceo has people who are better than him doing different roles and this is something i tell my people that your number two need to be better than you your number two need to be people that you look up to and you say, wow, yeah, this guy is so fantastic at what he's doing. Then, and if he does that fantastic job, he won't take your job. But he, but you will get acknowledged as a leader that you have been able to build a team of these five or four fantastic people who are pushing you up. So life is all about working with people. It's all about taking them into the right stride. So Naveen, next, next question is going to get you into trouble, huh? So this question is about uh, the McKinsey philosophy and the Tata philosophy. Now, these two organizations have very, very strong philosophies and culture. So tell us about, uh, you know, uh, what is a Tata philosophy versus a McKinsey philosophy? And they're supposed to be poles apart. And so how did you manage to bridge this divide? And, and where, do you, where, where do you see yourself in the two, two philosophies? Um, so... Look, I'll, I'll tell you what, what I make of this. The McKinsey values, if I, if I call them that, right? The McKinsey values were twofold. One was, very simply speaking, put the client first. So McKinsey as a firm exists to serve clients. And hmm. the idea was we have to go out of our way to serve our clients and to do what is right for them. Which, by the way, many times I saw when I was a young kid in McKinsey, I, I saw some of my best mentors, senior partners, refusing to do projects because they believed that, you know, the conditions were not right 
for getting the right outcome from the project so getting as we would call it in mckinsey the right impact so that was num- value number 1 and value number 2 was a caring meritocracy right as you rightly said you kind of benefit from mentorship and you kind of uh, help mentor a lot of people around you i mean the the tata values tata group values uh, right are different of course because you know the tata group is a is in in a way it's it's a unique group i don't think you will find such a group anywhere in the world where it's been in existence for 150 years it's got a brand which is unrivaled uh, it's got a philanthropic mission along with a corporate mission uh, it's delivered outstanding leaders to the country uh, and to the world i would argue over a period of time uh so when you look at the values that the tata group has uh, you know I, i would say they are different but they are not dissimilar they are not dissimilar so the first one is integrity which is of course stable sp- stakes we take it as stable stakes in the tata group it's only when you go out in the world you realize how it is not stable stakes right and how valuable that one word of integrity is the second one interestingly is responsibility uh and you know if you read what that value of responsibility means in the tata value articulation it is there's a phrase there which says what comes from the people goes back to the people right and and that's kind of caring for the people around you uh there's a third one which is excellence and again if you read the description of excellence there is a phrase there which says always promoting meritocracy very similar to within the second value of creating a caring meritocracy the fourth value in the tata group is pioneering so you know this is all about talking about being bold agile taking on new challenges and so on and last but not the least unity and i think this is this is very interesting this is to the point you just made that success doesn't come by pulling somebody else down i think the tata group is very much around building caring and collaborative relationships is the descriptor of that uh, you know that one word of unity which is the value so they are different but they are not dissimilar there is no tension or pull as far as you know i can see but i'll tell you the one thing that that we did i still remember 2016 i joined tata ai 2015 january 2016 the entire top team went away for a couple of days uh and uh you know, i i sometimes i don't like to go back to those days because those were very difficult days for us as a company but uh you know we kind of went away and said what is our vision mission values let's kind of articulate that and think about how it will drive the company and i'll i'll not talk about the vision and mission right now but the values were three values we crystallized and we looked at what we needed to do we looked at what the tata group values are we also looked at the aia group values because the aia group is a 49% shareholder today and like the tata group the aia group has been in existence for more than 100 years uh, right you could credit the aia group for starting insurance in asia uh, that's that's what our founder in asia founder in hong kong did uh and then we crystallized three values for our own company and we said look these three values will be our guiding star our north star and we said one is consumer obsession which you kind of touched on already that that translated into saying let's create the best products for our customers yes we are a profitable enterprise or a profit seeking enterprise but ultimately we have to deliver unquestioned value to our customers and i dare say some of the innovation on products that you talked of whether it is guaranteed income plans protection plans covering up to 100 years and so on comes out of that one value of consumer obsession the second one which kind of manifestation of this consumer obsession is the fact that we said we will cut out all low quality sales uh, we'll completely kind of cut it out and um, you know i i think your research team is putting up our values on the screen so thank you for doing that uh, i i am mighty impressed by your research team i must say sanjeev but i think the second manifestation of the first pillar or the first column you see here on consumer obsession was 
you know, in 2014-15, our 13-month persistency was 65-64%. And we said, this is unacceptable. Today, I'm very glad to say our 13-month persistency is close to 90%. <laughs> so that was the first thing we came up with. The second one we came up with was passion for excellence. And again, we said, let's focus our passion for excellence on providing the right consumer experience. We started measuring net promoter score for each and every transaction we were doing. Each and every transaction. We call it consumer NPS, transaction NPS. And again, that is something which over a period of time, we have built up to a value of 60 plus today. So I know you introduced a CFP program with a NPS of 84%. And I think that is truly brilliant and outstanding. We have come some distance as well. And we are today at uh, 60 plus in terms of our consumer, uh, consumer NPS. And the third value was a very obvious one, but I think we had to work very hard at it. <coughs> Sorry. At the time, we were 1,800 people. Today, Tata AI is about 8,000 people. We have one of the lowest attritions in the industry by an order of magnitude. By an order of magnitude. And we have won the Aeon Best Employer Award, which is now Concentric Best Employer Award, five times. And I think this is because of our third value, and I focus on our third value, which is people are core. And this hmm. means that when we recruit people, we recruit them for, for success. We invest in their capability. We invest in success. We award them for performance. And we kind of push ourselves and our people to the next level of performance. So don't get me wrong. Tata AI is not an easy place to work in. It is demanding, but at the same time, it's supporting. I think that's, that's our third value. So... Sorry for the long answer, but what I was trying to say was that ultimately what worked for us, for me, was that we were able to crystallize a set of values for Tata AI and kind of translate that into, into our business model, into our day-to-day -day activities. And I dare say we've been reasonably successful at that. I think there's still a long way to go and we will continue to go, right? There is no stopping, uh, but that's what worked for us. Very well said, Naveen. For us also, you know, it's all about the culture. And one of our first things that we that I try to tell my team is treat your client as your own retired father. That, uh, you know, <laughs> imagine that you are servicing your father. Give them a product that you'll buy yourself or you'll sell to your family. And second is service them as if you would service the your family. See, I can't promise that our team won't make mistakes. But at the end of the day, it's owning up to your mistakes and being there to correct them is what 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 is all about. And th this is what I got from you also, that it is a culture of responsibility. That means that I take ownership of what I do. And when you're taking an ownership, sometimes in the past your path, you make mistakes. But, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, so I think mistakes are fine. Repeating mistakes are wrong. And as entrepreneurs, as leaders, we need to allow our team to be able to make a mistake. They need to be able to joke about a mistake. They need to be able to acknowledge their mistakes. Only then they can improve on it or uh, they can take it uh, next level. So before we go on to the next thing, so there is a gentleman called Mihir, which who's asked me a question. He's saying, sir, you're talking about philosophy, but your team is not in responding to investments made with you. So, Mihir, let me tell you, see, they are always bad sheep in an organization. What can I say? You know, we are we have 4,000 people and they are people. And I, I and it is my heartfelt, I feel sorry that uh, this you had to go, you are going through this. So, please do, you are very welcome to write to me directly. Or, uh, you know, you can write to our uh, customer service head. His name is Jolly Asija. And I will request the team to put his uh, email ID. So please write to him directly and we will make sure that whatever issue you are facing gets corrected. And I personally take time. Let me tell you about my our founder, Mr. Kuldeep Kumar Bajaj, my father, who set up this company for the last 15 years. He just does one thing. He just reads each and every complaint that comes into Bajaj Capital. And he says, if I am, have a grip on the complaints and what people are saying, then I know how the company is running. I don't need to do anything else. So uh, please uh, do understand that, yes, there will be challenges and there will be some wrong people, but the company is there for you and we will answer each and every question that you have 
on, on this. So Naveen, going forward to our next thing, you are the uh, one of the first companies that brought in, or you are the first company that brought in guaranteed return plans, where you said, okay, okay I will take away this uh, thing that there is a power plan, you may get this return, you may not get this return, and which used to be misused because you could make your illustration at 8%, that if 8% is delivered, then you will get this much. And, you know, people had no control on that return. Whereas you launched these products where you said you pay this much amount and you get this thing. I remember when we started insurance with LIC, those were the type of plans available. And that's one of the most exciting parts mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, insurance I used to find. We sold a product called Jeevan Suraksha, which used to offer 12% guaranteed return for life. And it's still continuing. And, uh, you know, I think people who have bought it are very happy. I think LIC wouldn't be very happy with that product today or there was a Bima Nivesh at 10%. So how did you go about doing these guaranteed return plans? I know that the industry used to say, okay, okay, Naveen doesn't understand the industry, is too new. That's why he's got this thing. So how did you get a conviction to bring in these guaranteed return plans, giving five and a half, six, even 6.2, 6.3% tax-free returns for life after delivering on insurance? Again, some people say GST is not factored in. I'm saying these returns are after GST and everything. So how did you go about doing it? How did you get conviction of everyone? Now the whole industry is doing them. But, uh, you know, why, how, being the first person is also always very difficult. So how did you go about doing that? So it goes back to, goes back to the values and also, if I can say, our vision. See, I, I, I firmly believe that vision, mission values are ultimately things that need to truly drive an organization, right? And your strategy, your business model, your execution is subservient to the vision, mission and values. These are not things that you put up, you know, in the boardroom or have on screensavers. Uh, but these are things that senior leaders in the organization need to think about and need to cascade and make sure that people down the line are able to then understand and deliver against them. So again, thanks to your research team. If you see our vision, it says very clearly to enable dreams, inspire healthier, happy li happier lives, and become the preeminent insurance protection provider, actually, protection provider in the country. Now, protection is again a category I would like to believe we created in the private sector, but we can talk about that separately. Today, we are the largest writers of retail protection in the country. Uh, but we'll talk about that later if you would like. On, on the guaranteed plans, the experience we were having in our portfolio was that, as you said, PAR was giving us very low persistency. Part of that was because of the way it was sold. As you said, you know, there was some element of misrepresentation going on. And see, par, non-par, participating policy, non-participating policy, these are all words we have created for ourselves in the insurance industry. What does an average consumer know about par versus non-par? Right? What does he care? He, he doesn't. And therefore, in that enabling dreams phrase in our vision, he said one of the dreams of an Indian consumer is, has to be, that he's able to get a reasonable amount of savings with certain security. And of course, life insurance proceeds are tax-free. So that's already an advantage. And we said, okay, let's construct this guaranteed uh, return product. Now, as you rightly said, it is not easy to do it because suppose, you know, today interest rate is say about, you know, 30 year GSEC rate is at about 7%, right? 6.8, 6.9%. Today, we offer 5.5% to our consumer. We are basically guaranteeing that for the next 20, 30 years. But tomorrow, the interest rate that we earn to fund this product could go down to 5%. There is no guarantee. right? So one of the reasons the industry wasn't kind of marketing too much of these non-part plans or guaranteed return plans was because there was no mechanism to hedge to say, can I lock in? the investment the return that I'm earning today to make sure that I can fund what I have to pay to my consumer for the next 20, 30 years. 
or what people were doing was they were offering a guaranteed return at that time but you would recall 2014 2015 if you go back the rate of return was hardly any 2% 3% and uh, that was because they were very worried that how much of a cushion do we create between the interest rate that we earn today versus what we could be earning 5 years 10 years down the line and you, you can't predict right and the view we took is we can't predict as well at tata iia we are not bond traders if we were bond traders we would not be sitting in tata iia trying to run a business that would be trading bonds and making money hopefully so we worked very hard with uh, two bank partners I, i i i will name them because they were supremely helpful to us city bank and hsbc at that time they both stepped forward and we worked very hard with them uh, you know particularly our investment team our risk management team our finance team to create the right derivative structure for us to hedge this risk basically i will not make it too technical or complicated but we created an instrument first life insurance company in the market to create that instrument today all others have kind of followed suit but even today our share of market on this derivative instrument if you look at it from banks perspective tata aia share is 30% plus because we started the first and we have been writing these guaranteed income plans for the last as you said 5 6 years and that was the key that we had to crack that was the key aspect we had to crack and once we cracked that aspect then we got comfortable that we were not doing something stupid our shareholders would not be at risk our consumers would get something viable our distribution would find it easy to sell very it's very simple to explain a guaranteed plan compared to a par plan and that's how we went about it. Yeah, that's superb. So, Naveen, before we move on to the uh, next question, which is on protection and how to go about it and other stuff, but on the guaranteed return plans, let me tell you guys: these are plans where you get these are called non-par plans, and a lot of people don't know about insurance jargons. But you have to learn a little bit. These are non-par, where it means that whatever is the return you see on your policy is going to be guaranteed. so this is actually these are amazing plans because they are guaranteed first they are guaranteed by the insurance company then they are guaranteed by the shareholders and then also you have an regulator who is there to protect in interest of the shareholders in case something goes wrong so they will organize a takeover or that's what we have seen so no insurance company has actually gone down even the smaller ones so point is that these are highly attractive and today if you are to look at them for your portfolio you have to look at them as an alternative for your debt so the money that you used to keep in debt funds or other areas you can or your bank fds the the amount of money that you can commit for the long term because you have to understand the power of these products is that these are 10 to 25 years so the money that you can keep for long term the longer it is the better it is that you can use these products to build up a very very good corpus which is risk free and you get a 10 12 times life cover which is a bonus you take it and when you must ask your advisor to calculate the irr for you which is the internal rate of return after the gst and other expenses so that you can say okay what is the net return that i am going to see on my product so navin just last question on this topic that which is your favorite uh, non par product from the tata aia stable that you would like to tell people about that uh, if you were to mention one product which one would you mention and why so i would say the product that we have uh, just launched fortune guarantee plus we launched it in uh, february uh, it's a very simple plan and uh, the reason i like it is it's a lot of flexibility so we gave a lot of thought to the fact that <clears throat> the customer has a choice of not just how many years he or she has to pay for mm-hmm. but you can also then have a deferral period meaning you again decide whether you want to wait for 5 years 10 years 2 years 1 year whatever it is to start on your income and you also decide how long you want to earn your income for so that range is all the way from 20 years to 45 years so depending on your age depending upon the goals you know you can kind of create an income stream for yourself which is highly flexible uh, the returns are also very good amongst the highest in the industry 
but more importantly is the flexibility for how long you want to pay how long you want to wait and how long over what period of time you want to earn the income that i think it makes it a very very consumer friendly and therefore a good product thank you navin on that so guys please do look at fortune guarantee and participating plans are not uh, guaranteed plans so this is somebody has asked this question so also again navin you are also uh, the one who changed the term insurance or protection industry earlier policies were available till 70 75 then you brought the term till age the age 85 and now till age 99 so which has changed the whole term policy there are a lot of people who still don't understand what these products are and they say why do you need a product after retirement buy a term only till 70 you guys if you buy a term only till 70 then only insurance company will make the money because the chances of people living beyond 70 is almost 99 98% in india but if you buy a term till 99 then the chances of your outliving the plan is only 1 or 2% even if we say that with the improvement of medical so these plans are actually legacy transfer plans so you know just that for people who don't understand and they miss a long term protection plan they are actually the best the longest term you can get is actually the best thing you can do so navin tell us about these uh, you know plans about term and you are the largest writer of these plans in the country so just tell us about these plans how why are they important we have a lot of clients with us today the how can they use it yeah <laughs> sure yeah. sanjeev i think look let me go a little macro and then uh, i will come to the macro macro part again this was something we realized in 2015 16 that uh, you know there's this uh, old joke right that the first thing that people will do when they buy a new car is buy the insurance right uh, but they will not insure themselves and i think uh, what what we have to realize is that there's tremendous value to our lives all right and we owe it to ourselves and to our families to make sure that we are protecting and kind of safeguarding the value that our lives have and the simplest way the easiest way i dare say the cheapest way to do it is term insurance because ultimately all you are doing is paying the insurance company for the risk cover now as as sanjeev said look you know there are different term plans there are different options available in the market there are different benefits uh, right i think the thing that it kind of excites me about our offerings today and sanjeev we have one product which uh, you know is still under approval with the regulator so i will not speak about it too much but i think once it is approved it will again be a game changer in the marketplace see there is flexibility firstly in terms of how long you want to pay one of the things we realized is way back 2014 15 16 most of the term plans were what is called regular pay so if you are 40 years old and you want to get buy cover till age 80 you have to pay every year for the next 40 years right and one of the things we said we when we talked to consumers is they said hey can we get a plan that we pay for 10 years 15 years 12 years whatever it is right and we done with it and then we are covered for whatever age we want to be covered for so that flexibility is available today second flexibility is over what age you want to be covered right now it's your choice you know you want to be covered till 80 till 90 till 100 again there are plans and our offerings which are highly customizable but i would echo underline what sanjeev said that look one way to think of a plan which covers you up to 100 which is a very logical rational commercial decision is that it is basically legacy plan right and i have personally had conversations with uh, you know very successful entrepreneurs could be large scale could be medium scale could be small scale and they say that look you know it's a very practical problem in their lives that look i have two kids maybe you know one of the kids is interested in business and i will bequeath the business to that kid but what do i do with the other kid right so it's you know you kind of create you can literally create a chart for your client which is if your business is worth x right and you want to give your business worth x to one of your children how do you make sure that you kind of bequeath an amount of x to your other kid right 
and that is what is called equitable legacy planning so you can have these very intelligent conversations which says by buying a term plan which covers you up to the age of 100 you know you are kind of quitting a legacy just like you would leaving a sum of money behind or your business behind that's exactly what you are doing there are other flexibilities available in term plans nowadays which is that you say okay i want to be covered till 100 but starting age 80 i want to start to get some income uh, because you know i may need it for retirement or whatever expenses at that point of time or pocket money or whatever else it is right so there are those uh, those options as well so i think the term plan has evolved quite significantly and i think it is worthwhile paying a lot of attention to this one challenge in our country one fundamental challenge in our country is that our protection gap remains an inordinately high 91% which means that if every indian should be covered for 100 rupees an average indian has a cover only of 9 rupees right and that is the extent to which we as a country we as indians are undervaluing our lives i am using my words very carefully and responsibly but we are undervaluing our lives by letting this protection gap remain right and there are different rules of thumb that if you are 40 you take your current income multiplied by 25 and that's the sum assured you should have for example sit down with your advisor understand it uh, right if you are interested in this but please we don't undervalue our car we don't undervalue our mobile we don't undervalue our laptop right so why should we undervalue our life which is the most precious commodity and why should we not insure it right to the requisite amount see very well said uh, navin very very uh, well said on that also the guys there are a lot of questions we may not be able to take up all the questions that we have out there but i would request everybody who's on the talk if you have anything on your mind or any question on your mind please do write it in the chat and we will make sure that somebody or other answers every question that is asked here so if you are here and you have any questions see our purpose of this chat was not to talk about products but it was to to talk about leadership it was to talk about what is happening so i think uh, you know we may be able to take only a couple of uh, questions so one of the questions is that uh, navin they are asking you that look if we have a ulip policy and it is into equity and equities have done very well and we are coming close to our maturity so do is it is it time to do the right asset allocation and move the money into debt or uh, you know is there some uh, like uh, for some uh, service provided by companies like tata ai and others to help people manage with that i think uh, i think madhu sudan is asking this question so madhu i would you know urge you to reach out to a qualified financial advisor for this because you know how much of equity you have in your portfolio is a function of your risk appetite your life stage your life goals and therefore it is hard to answer this question uh, in in general right uh, the problem is if i answer this question in general i will end up giving you wrong advice which is something i i definitely don't want to do but in general i would say that look if you are you live nearing maturity it's a good thing which means that you have stayed invested through the period of the product that you bought it for right and i i dare say that if you have stayed invested in the indian equity markets over a longer term you would have realized your return objectives uh, right uh, so i think that is something to be to be happy about and of course i think as you know you all the you a little bit of protection uh, a little bit of life insurance cover as well so if now this is nearing maturity how do you take the proceeds where do you invest it do you put it in life insurance do you put it in mutual funds uh, let's be honest there are many other investment uh, opportunities out there so you need to sit down with a qualified financial planner figure out what do you want to make this investment for what are you saving for over the next 20 30 years maybe longer depending on your age right and choose the right instrument for yourself may may very well answered uh, this thing guys it's always you please use an advisor and also understand advisor is not god you know even advisor can go wrong you have to look at the intent because nobody can actually predict anything 
and you know what is happening inside is also not known like you even let me take an example of an ilfs you know it went from a triple a rated company where the best of the agencies were rating it triple a to it went into a default so if you start blaming your financial advisor for it that's not right because at the end of the day everybody in the life makes mistake and so will your financial advisor or advisory company but it is what they do after the mistake are they ready to help you file a claim are they ready to fight on your behalf is what matters and and when and that's why when we say asset allocation is important don't put all your eggs in one basket you must divide your eggs make sure that your money is divided so that even if there is something somewhere goes wrong still your corpus is protected so uh, uh, navin one final question on term lot of people are asking that for tata iia well, you know what is the uh, age at maximum age at entry that you offer and also people are asking how will how is this covid going to affect term and health insurance and what what, what can they expect yeah so on the on the first one look as i said uh, you know we have filed a very interesting plan uh, it is in the final stages of approval and i don't want to steal the thunder of that plan right now uh, and it's not appropriate also until it is finally approved by the regulator but if i go back to the question that you know i think uh, sanjeev one of the gentlemen asked you right at the beginning of the talk uh, i would say just wait for 10 days and you will get a plan that you know you will feel comfortable uh, to invest in uh, as far as uh, term is concerned uh, look on on covid uh, it is a very difficult situation it is a very unfortunate situation uh, we have to do what we can to deal with it uh, our view as as a life insurance company is that uh, you know it will normalize over a period of time uh, right now some of us had hoped that the situation had already normalized maybe 2 3 months ago we were celebrating that uh, covid had kind of gone away and i think covid has shown us that it has not gone away yet but the reason i'm saying uh, that it is a temporary situation is vaccines are here i know i am fully aware of the fact that there is a challenge in matching supply and demand of vaccine right now uh, that remains an issue but hopefully that will get solved in the next one two three months and uh, you know once we are able to vaccinate a very large proportion of our population uh, this this thing will be behind us so as i said it's a temporary thing it's not something we see continue on forever and therefore our approach to covid at this stage is that we will treat it like that we will treat it as a one off event and we will find a way to kind of identify absorb and contain the losses linked to covid uh but very much we are here for the long term we are covering people not for the next one year we are covering people for the next 30 40 50 years depending upon what their choice is and uh, fundamentally as india's demographics improve over the next 10 15 years as uh, you know india becomes more educated as india becomes more prosperous as uh, job opportunities grow uh, you know mortality will actually reduce uh, not increase uh, there is a fascinating study which has come in the lancet a couple of months ago please do read it if you can uh, it it kind of predicts the population of different countries and uh, you know it's a fascinating study because today we are about a 140 crore population uh and if i ask many of you what will be the population of india at the end of the century you please think about it please think about it now for those who are listening or watching the show do your mental mental math our population has been growing at about 1 and 1/2 to 2% per annum so you can do your mental math and see you know, what that means for next 80 years and you will come up with a very very large number but that number would be wrong because if you read this study it says that actually the population of india will peak at about 2047 at about 165 crores and then start to decline because longevity will increase birth rate will decrease right and if you were to project what our population would be in 2100 it will be give or take about 108 109 crores we will still be the most 
populated country in the world because it predicts the population of china at that time to be at about 80 85 crores but what i'm saying by this example is we are in the business of life insurance tata group has been here for 150 years aia group has been here for 100 years tata aia has been here for 20 years but we plan to be here for another 100 years and therefore we take a long term view on some of these things we can't be ignorant of covid but at the same time as i said it is a finite boundary event and we will ride out that event and we will stay committed to our cause of providing protection in a most affordable way in the most convenient way and in the most customized way that we can do to our customers yeah very well answered uh, navin uh, is very well answered so just quickly telling people look uh, on the covid has actually affected life insurance industry hard and especially the reinsurers have seen a tremendous number of claims so in premium has increased in the past and premium is increasing for most of the companies so even tata aia as navin has shared has stopped their old products term insurance products on 30th april and their new term insurance product is yet to get approved so all the details will come out and uh, but i would like to tell the listeners ki guys don't wait you know as the earliest possible if you don't have an adequate amount of life insurance please go and get it there is another question that has been asked that how much life insurance cover is typically available now that's a very technical question but let me answer it in a very simple manner that uh, generally the rule followed is up to 45 it is 20 times your income i think 45 to 55 navin if i'm going wrong please say is 15 times income and above 55 it's about 10 times income so this is the typical rule of thumb it doesn't have to be true for all companies they are companies which have retained their rates they are companies which have increased their rates so they are companies which are refiling and tata was one of the cheapest so obviously they have to refile their products and hopefully soon you know they will also have some very exciting products and knowing navin that you know the next set of product is definitely going to have some innovations so navin one last question uh, which people are asking and uh, you know we'll finish with that is that people if they have a tata product which is an old term product and there is a newer term product which they like or improve is it possible to port that life cover into the new product uh, do you allow that and what's the rules around that so i think uh, you know you what you can do is uh, please again approach us uh, specifically to your case um to me it is always useful to build on the cover you have and again as i said i will go back to the point i made and and sanjeev your kind of uh, guidance was bang on right in terms of if you are up to age 40 multiply your income by 20 or 25 and so on and so forth uh so i think what you need to do is build on the cover that you have so if you have cover of x amount i would suggest keep it look at what additional cover you need because you would have bought this cover of x amount i assume a few years ago and one of the things is irrespective of products companies covers tend to get more expensive as you age right and uh, therefore don't assume uh always that what you will get is like for like cheaper compared to what you have so i think as you go along in life as your income increases as your awareness of the cover you need increases please build keep on building your portfolio and keep on adding to your uh, term covers is what i would say couple of other things i would say sanjeev just minor points but important our old product is still available it's not stopped so yes you are right in this environment if somebody is keen to buy a cover the tata aia old product which is very competitive <clears throat> in the market is absolutely open please approach us approach advisor approach your bank approach your you know uh, wealth manager whoever you would like and uh, that is absolutely available second point please do not assume please do not assume that our new product will be more expensive than our old product right i think you know we work very hard as i said it is our core value to uh, you know make sure that our consumers have affordable products uh, there is a certain reality of the market but always we at tata aia have worked very hard to provide the best solutions that we can to our customers 
so that's why please don't make assumptions of the price of the new product just wait and watch and as i said uh, it will be out pretty soon thank you navin thank you navin and uh, so if the old product is on guys don't don't wait and file and uh, you know i would have loved to take uh, talked about much more we are already over time navin has this amazing philosophy of less is more which he told he we discussed it about 5 years back where he told me how they'll reduce the number of agents they work with and brokers and other banks and they'll do more and he's actually proven that that you know it's better to service less and there's so many other amazing things about navin so just uh, guys please write your questions we'll answer vrinda there's a question that how do i start about building a portfolio please learn see don't start doing something which you don't understand so we have a program called fantastic if you can do it please do it learn about investing there's so many other programs online available please learn about investing and then start building your portfolio just don't start about buying a sap or doing this but you must understand the purpose need what do you want to do what do you want to achieve whether direct stocks are right for you so so just learn about it and do it and thank you navin for an amazing talk today i hope uh, you know together we were able to enrich lives of people and we were able to contribute and thank you for an amazing talk today thank you navin thank you sanjeev thank you for having me and uh, it was a pleasure as always to talk to you and to talk to our viewers may i just end by saying sanjeev and everybody watching us please take care please stay safe and please the earliest you can get vaccinated that's the only only sustainable way we have of beating this pandemic good luck yeah please take care very well sanjeev